Hello everyone and welcome back to my devlog series, where I'm making a survival game about a man who came into consciousness in the middle of the forest with no memory of the past and no other choice than to fix a broken train to find food, shelter and a sign of life. In the last episode we went over the core train driving system, explored how the different components work with each other to start and drive the train and today I'm back with more updates about the game. Many of you were asking if the game will support exploring the surroundings for searching fuel and food and the answer is yes, there will be different areas where the player will leave the train and explore the surroundings on foot. We will have abandoned houses and trailers in the forest that will serve as a main food locations in the game. I'm yet far from implementing the houses but for now we've got the inventory system done for handling those items. We can collect new items, sort them in the inventory, use them or drop if not needed. The UI is obviously not going to look like this, I just thought it would be better to work on some core mechanics instead of spending time creating a temporary design. The player movement has also improved over the last video. I switched to using Cinemachine with the new input system and will probably never go back to using the basic camera in future projects. With the Cinemachine package I made a simple noise offset during the idle state to simulate a slight head movement and also added a little dumping for smoother rotations. The firebox interaction has also improved and we can now choose which fuel item to add into it with this cool camera transition. We will make heavy use of the Cinemachine for making cutscenes in the game with multiple camera angles, so if you are enjoying the devlog series so far, consider subscribing for new updates. As you know from the first devlog, the game will have a storyline forcing the player to visit specific places in the world and take predefined actions like finding items, exploring areas and so on. The journey will consist of visiting three train stations before getting to the final destination, so for tracking those and guiding the player throughout the gameplay I took my time to create a quest system in the game. In the journal the player will see the current main mission, the objectives of the mission and the specific tasks of the objective. I'm pretty happy how the system turned out as it now allows me to create any type of mission I will need in my game, both for the main storyline and for the side quests. Similarly to the inventory design, everything here is also going to be changed not to scare the players. But one thing that for sure will not scare you right now is the new day and night cycle which I absolutely love how it turned out. Achieving pleasant colors and natural lighting in my games was always my weak point, so I did my best to get a solid lighting for this project. I was always hesitant about using third party assets in my games and always prefer to code my own systems, but wisely using assets to save time is something many professionals do, so I also ended up with using an asset for configuring the lighting and the day and night cycle. I will shut up for a while to let you feel the mood of the game and see the new lighting configurations. I will be working on implementing guns and animals for the next video, so if you are interested in how this project goes, consider subscribing and watching other parts. See you in the next one.